we're going back in time to the first Thanksgiving to take turkey off the menu. Mm -hmm. Uh, Well, sounds like a lot of work, honestly. Wow, wow, wow. We're going to go back in time. Oh, see, I've said it once before and I'll say it again. If you can do an Owen Wilson, you can do a Jennifer Coolidge, you can do a Heath Ledger Joker. Uh They're all interconnected interconnected on such a deep level that i often lose myself <laughs> i often i shoot for owen you shift yeah i, it, I shoot for owen and I, I land on jennifer you know i mean i think it's it's really where you feel co- most comfortable it's right where you kind of end up and i'm like so dark and twisted that i'm like always sounding like the joker oh my god this movie made me feel like the joker though um yeah <laughs> is that right yeah but like uh, can you explain no that i want to go that i just want to go on tv and kill jimmy fallon Oh, well, fair enough. Well, yeah. Okay, sure. Where's the Jimmy Kimmel? I always forget which one I don't like. You told me that you are less offended by Jimmy I'm... Fallon. No. Who's... You don't like Kimmel. You don't like Kimmel. Who's the one who's dead behind me? You don't like Kimmel. I don't know. Fallon's the one that had beef with Young Justice and... No, I hate uh, Rizzler. I, he's the one I don't like. He had no respect for the Rizzler. I don't either, but... Hey, so I I don't like Jimmy Fallon. I, I got beef with him. I saw the best tweet that was like, Ellen was an apex predator. Yes, yes. Oh, you yes. have to ring these people out. Yes. And spit them out on the curbside. The hop to a girl would she not was- be coming out with her own Bitcoin if Ellen was still. It's true. It's so true. Oh. You're mean to a PA one time. <laughs> no, I'm not an Ellen defender. I'm, a, I'm no. actually a staunch Ellen hater. Yeah, fuck Ellen. Fuck Ellen. You know what actually is like the proto next evolution of Ellen that is a successful iteration in this movie? I think Amy Poehler. Amy Poehler has the Ellen sauce. Yeah. She has that same, she's got the Ellen Riz, but she uses her powers for good. Yeah, yeah, actually. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. I think everything we seem to know about Amy Poehler definitely checks for me. Like, she's she's all right. She Absolutely. Can, she can stick around. Absolutely. Big fan of Amy Poehler. 2017 girl boss feminism for me. I'm not, I'm, I'm still not mad about it. it. Not, yeah. <laughs> White women could do a lot worse. Exactly. So. Exactly. You know what? Well, yeah. And she was one of the only redeeming parts of this film as well. Yes. I was giggling at the little eyeball bit. The, the lazy eye. <laughs> so we'll be talking about the 2013 movie Free Bird. Yes. Oh, the theme is bad, right? The theme this month is bad. Yeah. The theme this week is Thanksgiving. Of course. I don't know if you, like, did you know anything about this movie before I texted you? No, and I'm not sure that I ever watched it as a kid, because this is very much one of those ones that you watch in the car. Right, yeah. You know, we you're rattling off a oh, hoodwinked, an yep. open season, yep. back at the barnyard. Yeah, exactly. The very, yeah, your friend's mom has the Toyota. Yeah, like, Nomeo and Juliet, right. something like that. Uh, right. Exactly. Um, This very much falls into that category, but... It was 2013, and I think I was too far gone yeah. at this point. I wasn't watching. I, was, I wasn't watching this. I, I wasn't even touched by then. Yeah, so I could exactly. I was making playlists. And I was staring out the window longingly. Yeah, you know the, um, the tail end for us. We were just aged out. I think a little exactly because I I had never seen this before, but I had certainly seen like Hoodwinked. Right. And yeah. I had not seen this movie, but I had only seen memes. Okay. Sure. Uh, there's like one meme in particular. It's like girls with a time machine, and it's like her visiting her grandmother, and it's like those like poorly drawn, but it's like boys with a time machine, and then it's a clip of the turkey saying we're gonna go back in time, yeah, and take turkey off of the menu or whatever. Sure. Like, they say yeah. the tagline of the film, and like, sure, that post really popped off, and I think there are a bunch of like YouTube analysis videos of like what the fuck is going on here. Okay. Uh, but I had never seen the actual movie, but I knew it was like a meme basically of course which upon starting the movie seeing that it was a nickelodeon production i assume of course did have a theatrical release in some capacity given that it was probably a holiday movie in 2013 they were probably putting this in theaters i believe i believe that they were but it was probably intended to be straight to tv basically a made for tv movie yes essentially And so I was like, what better of a thing to do on this Thanksgiving we week might as well. than just give you guys a, a short little cute episode. We're not really going to get too deep into the lore about free birds. There's actually a link in the description below. I think there is a really popular YouTube essay that Good. goes through like what is going on here. Because you could, I mean, this is a movie that you could really use one for. Right. This so was if you want a- that, go there. But we yeah. just. Well, this movie's a lot. 
It's a lot. It starts a new movie every 10 minutes, actually. Yeah. Until it ends. <laughs> Almost every 10 minutes, they're like, um... And you know what? And you know what? This calls back to cats. Well, yeah. It's a new cat every 10 minutes. What I think is a full circle. Yeah. We're, st- we're ending where we started. Exactly. Start with cats, end with turkeys. Exactly. You know what they say. <laughs> Enlighten me. One in the cat is... Two in the two. turkeys. Do you have um, thoughts or feelings about turkeys in general, though? So we grew up in an area where they're like wild turkeys. Very, very big population. There's so- a lot of them. So they'll be like in the road and shit. They're just about as common as like, I don't know, not pigeons, but they're... Deer? Yeah, but just, well, that's not a good comparison because people who don't have deer probably uh, so don't have enough. to eat. But they're, they're around. You know, you'll have to see, you'll see them. They'll go in the road. Hey. They're ugly, motherfucker. They're, that's what I was hoping you were going to say. They are ugly. Turkeys are so fuck, dude. The way that they try to face tune these fucking turkeys for this movie. You're not fooling me. The way the little gizzard is like a smooth, it looks like a... Not fooling me. That's a ball sack. No. That loads are... Yeah. Not <laughs> Dehydrated nut sack. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like just as, as foul as you could imagine. Yeah, they're uh, really ugly. They're big. And I don't think yeah. it's very good. As far as my poultry No. Goes, I'm just sort of like, it's just a cumbersome chicken that tastes worse. Yeah. I didn't realize that there's not... People really don't have turkeys around them um, oh. all over. You know what I mean? I thought it was a pretty common thing. It's just... No, it's just us. I mean, at least coming from my friends that are from the Midwest. Right. Horrified seeing turkeys for the first time. Oh, really? They have horrified. No, no association. Of no association. To the actual... No idea. Exactly. Exactly. Yes, sorry. That, yeah, yeah. I didn't set that up very well. No. But yes, the the jump scare of seeing a real turkey what are they? IRL. It's like, oh, time. because only in cartoons and they're always face-tuned. Yeah. And, well, who's see- and, and like, where are you that you're seeing a turkey IRL? Not at the zoo. Exactly. No, one, no one's going and looking for a turkey. You're not interacting with a turkey on an everyday span. Unless you live around them. We need to. So the jump scare of like being introduced to a turkey is rather frightening. I've seen it. Which I feel like maybe the only context in which a turkey is really like the face of something in reality is getting pardoned. And that was one of the many, one of the many beginnings to this. They they truly are so ugly that they shouldn't have to be pardoned. They should. (laughs) We're not pardoning you. First of all, I'm sorry, maybe I should just Google this, but what is the beginning lures of the turkey being pardoned? I don't know. What's the crime? Why are we calling it pardoning? It's like all turkeys are born with sin. Like, what are what are we saying with this? It's just so, like, typical white people bullshit. Right. I mean, I'm sure that it came around post-Groundhog Day. You know what I mean? Where they love to, like, bring another festive animal out right and do the whole thing and make a show of it and show we're all of a country love you guys this turkey is safe i don't know and maybe pita maybe maybe pita has to do with like you need to they're like hey. part in one and they're like yeah fucking okay, sure sure and you're like yeah Maybe should have asked for a bit more, huh? Yeah, I don't know. So that that's a great question for someone who does like video essays on TikTok. Right. Yeah. 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 It, it's, explain the turkey to me, please. Yeah, well, explain the, the turkey pardoning at least. Specific. Yeah. 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 Because this film, actually, for all of its faults, for all of its be- jarring beginnings. It does do a good job setting up. Owen Wilson narrates to us. He says, people love holidays. Americans. Yeah. We're speaking to an American audience. Yeah, well, yeah. It's a Nickelodeon direct TV movie. Absolutely. It is. To middle America here. He says, people love holidays. They love Thanksgiving. Food, meat. We're establishing a theme. Okay. Yes. Right. We're setting it up. The sure. show for children. Sure. Great. But then it just keeps like setting shit up that he's the outsider turkey. And the other turkeys don't like him. And the other turkeys are stupid. The other turkeys are dumb, and he's the only one who's smart. He was born with a blue head and not a red head. Yeah, but he's makes, different. So he's different. He's skinny because he yeah. refuses to eat the corn because they're all like corn fed. Yeah. And then there's like a religion. He's basically wearing his tin hat. He's kind of he's kind of a. But the whole thing gets undone in reverse when the turkeys are like, "Wait, you're right. We believe you." Then he gets taken away. 
to be the turkey who's parted yeah. by the president. Special turkey, yep. Mm -hmm. He's going to be parted by the president. Okay, what the fuck? He's like getting he he's made it. He's hanging out in the White House. He's pulling yeah. pranks. Uh -huh. You think maybe this will be a silly film yeah. about how he gets to be the parted turkey? No. Mm. He gets kidnapped by what I only assume is supposed to be like a communist rebel fighter. Like sleeper agent, basically. And comrade. And he's like, we're the... I don't even know his name. But the it, Turkey Liberation it, Fund. It, but it's Woody Harrelson. It's just Woody Harrelson and it's only him. This, they didn't even give him a script. Yeah, it's but it's basically two different two two turkeys wearing two different tin hats link up to oh. maximize their joint sleigh exactly. to go back in time to the first thanksgiving and take turkey off the menu yeah yeah because apparently crazy turkey woody harrelson has caught wind that there is an operation to actually send someone back in time that the government has a time yeah. machine they're um, gonna rip open the space time pussy continuum Jodie Foster's space time pussy continuum. It's to so, make contact so fast. So contact coded to make. And they like, get into this like egg orb. Yeah. It, well, they commandeer it from the yeah. president, the 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 astronaut that they're sending. Woody Harrelson the, Turkey and Owen Wilson Turkey hijack the mission to travel back in time, which is happening the day before Thanksgiving. And they go back in time. Mm -hmm. They tell George Takei, who plays the space... Space Hal. Space Hal. Uh, Steve. Steve. So. Well, sorry. Steve, yeah. Steve Hal. And he, uh, bring us to the Thanksgiving. And so they go back in time. And this is only 20 minutes into the film. Oh, my God. You're right. And you're like, <laughs> wow. I've watched six whole movies at this point. It's absolutely mind-boggling. And... Then it just continues because he meets Amy Polar Turkey, who has titty. Yeah. And a lazy eye. Yeah. How could you not love her? And they, they link up with the... Well, the, the, the Native American. The Native, the Native, Native American turkey. Yeah, the indigenous coded turkeys who, whose feathers are all precariously placed so that you know what they're trying to represent. Uh -huh. It wasn't like doing anything with that in a way that was... It was, it was, yeah, that was actually meaningful. meaningful. It was really weird. It was just that the turkeys from, that lived in America back in those days were, of were the course, native also yeah. them. Yeah, because they didn't bring those on the boat <laughs> over with them. Oh my God. But, yeah. But, so basically, Owen Wilson turkey has to set up a plan with Amy Polar turkey, because they're the two smart turkeys, and then Woody Harrelson turkey has to link up with Keith David Turkey. Oh my God, it really... Uh, he, was he the one who died, who's wearing the George Washington wig, maybe? I think that was... Really. Uh, yeah. But then there's the basically the two Chief. buff... The two buff turkey. Chief Turkey. The Chief Turkey and Woody Harrelson, and they're both, like, the operative guys, and they, like, have this really homoerotic mm -hmm. display of, like, masculinity, where they puff out their... The ball sacks. Like, literally, what the fuck? Their neck ball sacks, yeah. A bunch of chase sequences. The the townspeople are angry at the burgomaster because he hasn't given them food, but he's saving the food for Thanksgiving. And then Amy Polar Turkey and Owen Wilson Turkey go into the spaceship and he shows her the earth and that like knocks her into consciousness. And so then they have to, and then there's another part where he goes back and then there's time travel and there's like 10 Owen Wilson turkeys. So much. He redirects his time travel plan to be like, no, you have to go back again and then again and give a magical doorknob to the baby version of Owen, or of Woody Harrelson. Yes, turkey yes, So yes. That he can be a prophet uh -huh. and later then in the future, deliver the plan. It's really absurd. But yeah. in the end, quite frankly, they do what they set out to do. Yeah. They went to the first Thanksgiving and they took turkey off the menu. And they put pizza on they it. They put pizza, specifically pizza from Chuck E. Cheese, which, which is arguably one of the worst pizzas you can get. Yeah, that was a choice. They, they didn't even animate it to look good. No, it looked like shit. It looked like shit. Looked like, bitch. like, I wonder if that was on purpose. Was that supposed to be a joke? Like, we got you the shittiest pizza that we have in America I don't know. today. And they're like, wow, this is great. This is going to save racism. It, it might have just been that this was also made for children. And children are familiar with the place that serves Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> Pizza as Chuck E. Cheese. Yes, and get that sponsorship. Yep. Get, get your bag, Owen Wilson. Of course. I see you. When I just think about like the way pizza looks in like um the very goofy movie, 
with yeah. drip and yeah. cheese and it like ringy makes you salivate or like teenage no ninja- this looks like ch- this looks like chunky greasy pizza it's like the congealed the, the ch- congealed and cheese the saddest possible thing you could see when you open the pizza box is like yeah the sad congealed cheese the it, one that it looks cold the one that like you can tell came from a pre like with a pre-made crust yep. you know what yep. i mean and they just slap it on oh it's so sad <laughs> And then that's the end of the movie. And then what? He decides to stay in the old time so he can be with Amy Poehler. I don't even know. So, like, Dara, we watched this movie and it was ago. We ended this movie 10 minutes ago and quite frankly. It's left my brain. But then there's like a post credit scene where I mean, Woody make- Harrelson Turkey goes back to the future. But then he keeps time traveling, I guess. It's they- like, we got to do Turducken. They-, they set it up for a cute little sequel. Oh, okay. not that I think one ever happened. Absolutely, I certainly hope not. Absolutely, not. I, I'm sh- I'm sure that everyone got the money that they were due from this and then ran. Well, I think it was kind of a flop, but it had a 55 million dollar budget and it made back like 110. So it, it made back its money, but I don't okay, think yeah. it was not a success as no, far as oh, like, I can't imagine. Things. I can't imagine that it would be. No, no. But um, it's really giving 2013. It's giving like back at the barnyard to me. That animation style, I find very uh-huh. nostalgic. Like really, for sure, it's so crunchy that I kind of like it. Yeah, I wish it was weirder. There was definitely some things that in it that had me giggling. It wasn't like weird in the way that some of the ones we grew up with were. Yeah, yeah, like unhinged and unhinged and bizarre. Right. It was just it was it was taking itself a little too seriously. I- my issue with it was it felt like okay, obviously it was a new movie every ten minutes. It felt like it was made to overstimulate me, mm. almost. Right. I mean, like I don't know too much about all of that and co- the way that sort of content and media affects our brain or killed kids' brains. And yeah, but you, you know, can only assume. I, I yeah that it's yeah. getting well. I, I yes. Well, I I know that like. They say um, coca melon is like really, really bad for your child's brain developmentally. Some, and this is they're not saying words. It's just sound sure. that is not absorbing like, yeah. actual content. Yeah, where it's like meaningful. Miss like, Rachel is like really, yeah, it's Miss really, Rachel's awesome. it's really mm-hmm. great or something like that. This is one that feels like it would be on the um, bad side it's, it's, of something to show for your child. The beginning of a dark path, I think. Yes, yes, exactly. Because I think while it could be potentially brain rot, I still think a feature length film with any sort of narrative composure is yeah. still a win. Yeah, it feels like feels like in the creative process, they kind of just like shit into their hand and threw it on a wall. And then picked out from there. No, they made a mind map. They put the words in the middle. We're traveling back in time to the first Thanksgiving to take turkey off the menu. They put that in the center and they said, okay, let's mind map this. And then they picked the 15 best sticky notes and put them in a chronological order. It, and let a different person write each scene, and that was the fucking film. And that, you know what that is? That was the precursor to AI. Well, but at least it was. Somebody had a stupid idea, sure. and they just made this whole movie around this one kind of dumb idea. And yeah, yeah, sure, okay. And then time travel, and then why not make him the turkey who got parted? Okay, it's a yeah. creative writing exercise. Yes, exactly. like an improv, yeah, or something that they yeah. happened to get a fifty-five million dollar budget for. Sure, I still think that that as a concept is a lot better than a lot of shit. Oh, 10 percent. It does feel a little AI generated to me, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like I Just said, in, the, the, in first, the... the first step down a bad path, but it's still only like, yeah, the very first when media started to get really brain rotty. Exactly. Right? Like, it's just fucking stupid. But the striking difference between like our perspective in 2024 right now and then I'm sure when they made yeah, it. Yeah, this is about a decade. In 2013. Like, we were cracking up at the fact that the president, the animated president in this movie, what? was like a young, he was like a 45 to 50 year old man. He had a, he had like a daughter who was probably like six or yeah. something. Like a comic relief moment daughter or something. Absolutely. Like a normal aged man to be the president. And we're like, oh, how sweet. How sweet was that? That in 2013, they thought that that was still a possibility. Really? That that was something that might potentially happen. Like, now I'm like, can we get them... Under 70. Mm-hmm. That's the goal. Yeah. Ideally. Ideally. A, a 60 would be good. Yeah. In, yeah. Right. In the 60s. And you're like, literally when Kamala is like the cool young option and she's still. Yeah. Old, like. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it's just. It's so dire. It's so dire. It Ooh. brought a tear to my eye. Truly. That I'm like, this was the, the comical future that they 
Yeah. That they could have come up with. Yeah. Like, oh my God. But I think I want to make a reel of Owen Wilson's voice as Lightning McQueen in Cars, as the polar bear in Fantastic of Mr. Course. Fox, okay. and then as him in this. Yeah. And just like put it together like an audition reel, but it's like him saying wow in all of them in the same fucking inflection. Like, mm-hmm. hire me, Owen Wilson, for your next film. We're all talk like this. Like every fucking time. I wish I could be that naturally. The way you, the cadence of your natural speaking voice is so captivating that they're like, don't do anything. Yeah, just come in and read the line. Keep booking this guy to go, brilliant. Mm -hmm. He cast a spell or a charm on us all, I think, because how does he get away with this? I guess Woody Harrelson, too, just to always Mm -hmm. be. If you really find your archetype early in Hollywood, I guess you can really get your bag with that. I'll never say no to Woody Harrelson. Love that man. No, I think he's problematic. Yeah. I think he... But he, as an actor... Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately. Like a, the raw yeah, milk truther. Unfortunately. <laughs> Not the raw Never. milk. Not a raw milk truther. Not an RFK raw milk. <laughs> Vin popping. Good news, you guys. Mango jewel pugs are about to be legal. That's because <laughs> RFK me and Chuck. Yeah, really. Oh, my God. It's the worm in his brain that's going to oh run the goodness. fucking Food and Drug Administration. Jesus Christ. <laughs> no, we're so fucked. But oh, I also wanted to I wanted to promote um that we have an episode. If you're still listening 20 minutes in, here's a little nugget of free wisdom for you. Yeah. We just posted an episode up on our Patreon about the new movie Anora. And we actually Yes, made, ma'am. We made it so anyone can listen to it. So yes. even if you're not a Patreon member, if you don't pay our $2.86 uh, fee or 86 cent fee to be a member of the Swan Patreon. You can still listen to our episode on Anora because we just decided to put it. It was like a shorter one. We just sort of did some. I assume this episode will be a little bit shorter as well because it's Thanksgiving week. We're, we're going to the Charlie XCX brat party. Yeah. Right? So, yes. I need to bleach my eyebrow. Oh my God, stop. Should we? No. But, but you know, if you want some more swamp content this week, you can yeah. go ahead and Always there. on Patreon. Um, we're hopefully going to be doing um a wicked. wicked a wicked episode in the coming weeks we were gonna do gladiator but fuck gladiator so we're deciding not to cover we're gonna do fucking gladiator because we were both ripped to get horny yeah in the like, theater obviously yeah for everyone obviously squirting in the seat alongside my girls except it turns out who would have thought it that an old man is a zionist oh no ridley scott i don't know enough to say it about Rid- ridley scott but i know that whoever what production company is doing gladiator whatever whatever production i don't know hollywood hates well hollywood is just full of zionists right. crawling with them um, and they basically cut out um, this actress from the entire film because she's an Egyptian Palestinian actress. Yep, and she was like wearing kafias to, yeah, to promote promotional and so they just cut her out of the movie almost entirely. She's still in it a very yeah, small in the background. Her name is Mae Callumway. I yeah, I know Pedro Pascal has been posting like a lot of photos of her, mm-hmm. which I feel like is an incredibly low bar. People be like, "Wow, he's really doing mm-hmm. his part." I'm like, he hasn't said anything. Yeah. He's just, I think he's doing the sneaky PR yeah thing but it's like still such a low fucking bar it's, like it's exactly. so obvious what happened here yeah that she's palestinian huh. and was yeah. openly speaking about the genocide yeah. that's happening and they were like mm, we're gonna she was the love interest the yeah love exactly interest. yeah and they were like oh let's just cut which this. is a huge part they're in like, a ginormous blockbuster movie they're like we'll cut this part out uh, yeah convenient. so um so that yeah fuck you ridley scott we'll be pirating it now yeah exactly so um so but we will be talking about wicked because apparently it's, it's a new fucking Citizen Kane. Everybody loves Wicked. My, yeah. boss, my boss, he's like, yeah, my eight-year-old daughter really wants to see it. I guess I'll take her this weekend. And I, on Monday, I was like, how was it? And he was, oh, it was amazing. Yeah. I was like, it's like, oh my God, great review. I, 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 everyone I speak to. I'm, I'm really excited to get it thrown back into my face. Yeah. Yeah. I love to be wrong. I guess people, some people are still holding up on the criticism that the directing is not great. Sure. That the color grading is an issue. Sure. Um, and that there are not enough, like, uh, group scenes, what do you call them? Like, chorus ensemble sure. scenes. Yeah. That there's really only the one at the school that they keep showing with Bowen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. The, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Girl, like, that scene looks really good because it's the only time in the movie they ever do that. Mm. So it's like, hmm, interesting. But I, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to reserve my own opinion. I'm going to hold space. I hear that Ariana Grande might be getting a Best Actress nom. I'm going to hold space for the lyrics of Defying Gravity on this one. Uh, absolutely the fuck not. 
We'll see. That's we'll see. Crazy. I listened to the soundtrack. We'll I don't know. Apparently, she really made it her own. She hit the notes, but she was breathy. <laughs> I'll say it. I'm very excited. I'm. I'm. I'm actually pretty um, stoked about are it now. Like a, are you like a wicked? Like, did you grow up listening to that a lot? Definitely had a phase of it. I wouldn't say it was ever on my top, <laughs> you know, list. But I, I think that once I listen to it, it's all gonna come rushing back to me. I had, a, I had a big wicked. I bet you fucking did. Yeah, growing. Yeah, up. like because I went to see it. Yeah, of, of course, course. of and course. So my friend and I, my friend was way more into it than I was. She had like read the book and shit. Uh, she was really into um the book. With- I, I, anything I have heard from the soundtrack, I've heard through TikTok and um. No one mourns the wicked. I will say I am very impressed with her. She no, she hits the notes. She's a good singer. I'm yeah. not saying she sounds bad. I'm saying I think I don't know. I'm excited to see her comedic timing and everything like that. I yeah, mean, it's also funny. That's us awesome. exactly. I think she's got it. I think she's got it in her. Mm. Um, so I'm excited. Bob the drag queen had good things to say yeah, about it, and I, also I saw that his opinion as well. Bo and Yang and her are also good friends. Like I think that she's. I think she's a funny person. Like remember. We have to remember her roots on Victorious. Like, God, no. Truly, though, I mean, it, it does come in handy. God, I literally, I showed my hairdresser a photo of Ariana Grande in 2014, and I said, one give day, it to me. One day I'm putting you on blast. Give it to me. <laughs> young, young, young redhead Dara. I had a hair dyeing phase for quite a while, and I think, what was it, like seven? Seventh through like tenth grade, I you have bright red fire hair, fire like to my waist length, fire truck red. Yeah, it was a lot. Yeah, it was a lot. It looks good. Thanks. Yeah, it was a it was a lot of upkeep. I could imagine. Yeah, yeah. I have a lot of hair. I could imagine Jen's credit card bills must have been in the fucking room. Like my hairdresser would be like, "Hey, can you?" You have to make appointments like early because we have to pre-order the dye because right. they use so much that we don't. They're like, we don't carry much of this red dye forty. So like, we don't even uh, keep this much in stock. Like, we need to pre. We need yeah. a special order. Yeah, that shit fried my hair because I was also ble- I fucking bad. I was bleach blonde for years, and there was also hot pink for a second, and I looked like the main bitch from Lazy Town. And that's when I said this needs to end. Yeah, and now you've been, you've been pretty brown for a while. Yeah, I just have rat tails now, which is my way of. It expressing be- yourself yeah without putting coloring in it because i wish that i could do that shit without it yeah like, totally damaging it i know that's why i shaved my head to dye my hair because mm-hmm. i didn't want to fuck with it that bad um and i wasn't yeah but anyways if only I- only a hair dye that was all natural would sponsor our podcast <laughs> no i'm just kidding i'm just kidding um but oh what else were we talking about uh Freaking Ringo Starr casting confirmed. Oh my God! Yes, Mr. Barry. So there have been yep. speculated mm-hmm. in rumors they're going to make four separate biopics for each member of the Beatles. Bing. Yeah, well, that's, how, that's, that's, what they, that's what they say. That's what. So this is what the plan is. This, is that this, confirmed? This is what I've. Oh, this wow. is all the speculation. Nothing is confirmed. Confirmed, but this is the speculation: is that it's a four separate biopics directed. By different people, question mark? Maybe check me on that. But that will all come out on the same day in 2027. So all four Beatles biopics will be out and available at the same time. Best day of my fucking it. life. I don't believe it. That would be, I mean, it would be a fucking bear there's of an undertaking. But I would rigmarole over who is who and some speculative things. But we've got the first Barry Kogan information is, in an interview with Ringo Starr. Yeah, he be- he said he believes Barry is taking drum lessons. So it is all but confirmed. He believes Barry should be, uh-huh. hopefully, hopefully, hopefully taking drum lessons. Hey, Ringo. Well, yes. You don't uh, really, you need to unlearn. Uh, I- yeah. Take drumming lessons and then you need to do some unlearning to be to be Ringo. Or maybe just to like a fifth grade. No, I think you, I think you just need to learn how to do drums when you're on drugs. Like while you yeah, while you figure that out, it's got to be simultaneous. But um yeah, I don't know. I a huge Beatles fan mm-hmm. and I'm a big fan of a lot of the boys that are have their names in the ring for these roles. So I I've, I've got a lot of stake here. And you're a Paul? You're a Paul. I'm a Paul girl. I love Ringo obviously. I'm a drummer at heart. Um love Ringo. But you're a Paul girl and Mr. Paul Meskel oh. is rumored to be playing Paul. So that I mean, I'll like- basically just 
shot to your chest. I, I mean, I'm going to turn into, like, um, go- Goopy Elizasu when the news oh drops. my god, it's literally my face I'm just, off. I'm just, and I did so long. Exactly. Oh, exactly it. Um, but I don't know how I feel about Barry, honestly. I'm not, I'm not convinced. Hmm. Me, is I don't have anything against Sabrina Carpenter. I think her no. music is a lot of fun. Yes. I think her top 40 hits don't annoy me yet. Yeah. Whatever. Agreed. People who are like, why is she being sexy on stage? It's like, shut the fuck up. You sure. Know? People, I'm like, let her do whatever she wants. Sure. She's so hot. She should be able to wear a little out, a cute outfit, you know? She should be able to go pussy out. I think she right. should be able to like, do you know that? Oh, I'm just, <laughs> I, I, I just feel like she should be able to squirt on stage onto uh, like the audience. If she so chose. It's honestly, but I'd all love that. And I, think, I think there's nothing wrong with that. So I like Sabrina Carpenter just fine. And I really, really loved Barry Keoghan, specifically leading up to his casting in the Marvel's Eternals movie. Yes, yes. That's kind of his, one of his big first, like, step into the, the big block. Yes, and he started getting hot. He started popping off because he got that Marvel training that yes, to get yes, the, the body. But yes. I, was, I was still a, I was a fan of him before the sure, first sure, 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 sure. Then, of course, from there, he's now going to be the Joker in the new Batman, which is kind of big and popping off, and especially Saltburn. That was, like, the big thing, right? Yes, I don't love that. I it, it, like, Once the world learned that he had a hog, he started acting different. Swear it, because I find him so charming. And now I just like see him in his fucking fuckboy outfits at Coachella cheering on Sabrina Carpenter. I'm like, that's great and everything. But no, no, it's not. You're no longer for me. Exactly. Sorry. Exactly. Also, also learning about the whole wife and kid thing. Also not my favorite. I really judge that. I can't speculate. Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's not. Yeah. But, uh. I just don't know if he he doesn't give me a Ringo energy. I don't get Ringo energy from him. I mean, I think anyone that really wants to get into this, go watch the Beatles. Um, not the Help movie. That one's a little bit questionable. But they, what is it, Hard Day's Night or something like that? Mm, that's the that's the good Beatles movie. That's yeah. the good one. Yeah, 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 yeah. I believe Hard Day's Night. Hold on. Hold on. Let me let me make sure I'm getting this right. Where the fuck is it? Where's my diary? Did you watch it yes. recently? Yes, I did watch it recently. Mm-hmm. Fun watch. Um, yeah, it just really gives you an understanding of who these young men will have to be playing to a certain extent. Yeah, yeah. Pre game, like pre I- pre game, the Beatles cast announcement by watching a hard day's night. Honestly, well, I think it's just like there's I I, I... okay. The thing about these movies, I'm not worried about the casting choices for these men for the later periods, like Sgt. Pepper's era and afterwards, Mm -hmm. but them playing, like, the young, I'm a little skeptical about. I'm a bit skeptical. I almost wonder, though, if each different movie will focus on a different part of each of their lives. Maybe. So, if you want, because to me, there has to be some sort of buy-in to see all four. Because if you're like, okay, I'll just go see the John Lennon one, right? Sure. But if that's only a little piece, you, they only show John Lennon in a specific, you know, oh, in the later years with fucking Yoko Ono or whatever. Yeah. But then it's like, if you want to get the earlier Beatles, you'll have to go see... Like George. The George movie. Yeah. yeah, right? So I feel like they are going to have to spread it out to keep people interested. Yeah. So... We'll see. I, I highly doubt they're doing a beginning to end Beatles career full recap movie yeah. of each Beatle. I bet it's going to be like yeah. vignettes or like a snippet. I think I, I agree with you there. And I think that would be the more tasteful thing to do for mm-hmm. sure. And I think that I think that everyone with their name in the hat would do a really good job. Honestly, I could see Harris Dickinson doing a really great job at John Lennon. Um, and I think obviously that these are all coming at times in their careers, which makes sense. Yeah. Certainly for Paul Mescal. Right. Certainly for Harris Dickinson, especially with Baby Girl on her way. Okay. Ex- ex- I've seen some actually good criticism, though, of that those the movies i'm gonna go see baby girl and i'm gonna like it and I, i'm gonna well i don't know if i'm gonna like it but i'm gonna be, i'm certainly gonna jerk off to it i'm gonna be excited about it you know right yeah but i did see a lot of good criticism about how those movies about those power dynamics are always that situation and it's just because she's an older woman and he's a younger man does not change the fact 
that it's always a man male domination yeah. you're right you're right and even oh it's power power switch she's his oh, boss whatever, yeah. whatever no matter what other power struggle it's yeah. always it's like still, a better thing yeah and it's like I'm, oh can we just i'm hoping this move beyond i'm hoping that it surprises me and yeah. that there's something right. about it that flips it on its head and mm-hmm. not just that and that there is a bit of you know some something a little bit more but then that Harris Dixon, I will say, has impressed me more as an actor than Paul has. I you see seen normal people though. Oh, Dara. Oh, I'm unlike Ridley. Have Sp- you have you seen uh, After Sun? No. Yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you've seen like sure. Triangle of Sadness. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think I think there's some homework that you have to do. That yeah, I got for you. Like, yeah. Own media. Yeah, but I mean, uh, and I don't know about of quinn as george so they've had some other guy i saw that and, they, and now but it's still it's it's like a 50 50 every other sure i see yeah one or the other that's the thing that i just don't know yet i cannot tell if this man can really act i have yet we have to see glad i have Whoa. yet to see well he's he's hardly in it he's he, hardly in it really it's him and another and they play twins i know that twin emperors and they're basically like a beavis and butthead comedy really yeah. moment that is very, very scarce. It's Damn. not in it. They're not in it right. a lot. They they are not the primary villains of the film, even though the yeah. trailer makes them out to be. I think their appearance in the trailer actually might be about it in the film. But what are you going to eat and drink with this movie? <laughs> I'm just going to keep it simple. Let's get into our regularly scheduled programming. I would fuck the turkey, eat the turkey, kill the turkey, yes, eat, yes, marry the yes, turkey. Yes, exactly. Which turkey? Well, that's a brief that is on... Um, no, I don't think we can play Fuck Mary Kill. No, I don't think there so. There was like the fucking uh, mayor of the town, the the turkey hunter. Turkey hunter was kind of hot. Uh, I let him hit. Hunter, Mary, the Chuck E. Cheese pizza delivery guy whose goatee turned into a rat tail. I think it's actually. Yeah, it's going to like connect that yeah. way. Yeah. Well, actually. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, I'll fuck the turkey hunter. Sure. And that's it. I, I'm not getting involved anywhere else. The only woman billed on this entire film is Amy Poehler. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes. Eat and drink, though. I'm gonna... Like you should have a Thanksgiving sandwich. Of course. I'm gonna make a vodka crayon and keep it really mm-hmm. fucking simple because this movie is a, a goddamn mess. Um, and then... Do not have pizza. No, do not have pizza. I liked my breakfast option today which was our, our um shout out the coffee house just the, uh, co- the did coffee house the coffee house shout out the coffee house they do this thing called what is it the like sweet and salty or it's like a cinnamon ra- cinnamon bagel mm-hmm. with bacon and like some kind of fun cream cheese and an egg but i don't like eggs right now it's like so. basically a bacon egg and cheese but with sweet cream cheese and yeah sweet bagel yeah and the bacon i don't know with the bacon and the sweets like really yeah, salty and sweet exactly it's really good fire, honestly um but i am not in an egg phase of my life so i got that i took that right off i said no thank you no egg so it was basically just um a bagel with cream cheese and some bacon on it it was fucking fire fire and an iced coffee yeah to exactly you, to prep you for your thanksgiving meal exactly so yeah i think you're right though uh, a thanksgiving yeah thanksgiving sandwich, sandwich is gas that's the only way i ever really want thanksgiving turkey it's uh-huh. like in a sandwich with a bunch of other shit yeah like yeah turkey's ass and thanksgiving's a bullshit holiday i know i was gonna brine a turkey this morning okay. and then i i you know it just wasn't even fucking worth it because i mean all you do is slather the way that you eat turkey is that you put it on your fork with the other stuff yeah yeah so that you sneak it in your mouth so you're still eating it Mm -hmm. but you don't have to fucking taste the shitty ass turkey i actually had the first good turkey of my life yes our our friend rachel shout out friend of the pod rachel shouts out rachel made a fire turkey covered it in cajun butter my god it was amazing sticks of butter yeah bothered all over that turkey yeah it was amazing that's a turkey that i would raw dog that's the first the genuinely the first turkey in my life that i've been like wow this was worth the effort absolutely absolutely so one in a million you know yeah yeah truly um i don't have that kind of effort in me though i'm in i am in charge of the thanksgiving meal um you're in charge yeah damn yeah that's a huge responsibility i don't mind it i don't do shit i like it i bring a bottle of wine that's nice yeah yeah, I've got it down to science at this point, basically, so I'm not too worried. That's a great skill. Yeah. That's a yeah. real test of your organizational management. I actually think if put on your resume, 
my family fully puts me in charge of Thanksgiving dinner and I yeah. hire you. Yeah. Like that is a good sign of like managerial yeah. experience, organization, yeah. everything you want. And in, in like I'll have really. like my mom help me out with a couple of the things basically. But you're delegating tasks. Yeah. But but yeah. <laughs> but I, I know that I, I start off with my cranberry sauce because that can just sit there. And get reheated and, you know, mashed potatoes. I, I I'll make the cranberry sauce. Yeah, you homemade. The... Homemade. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay more. Much better. And super easy. Super easy. You just throw some cinnamon sticks in there, some Grand Marnier, a little sugar, a little brown sugar. Okay. Some orange juice. Call it a day. Cool. Yeah, not bad. I love that gelatinous shit. It's disgusting. I, I love that. it. Yeah, it reminds me of my childhood. Again, slathering everything in cranberry sauce so that it's edible. Exactly. It really doesn't matter at the end of the day. I also grew up eating boiled vegetables. Disgusting. Sick. It's fucked up. Sick. No, I do that. I do a bacon Brussels sprout. Yes. That one's nice. Fire. Um, And then what else? I love a sweet potato casserole. See, i big fan of that. I don't know. I do not want marshmallows in my dinner. I do. I want something to sort of palate cleanse the savory everything else. I Somebody made a good point recently that that is way better with ham than it is with turkey, though. I would bet. That makes Maybe sense. The sweet potato casserole with the ham because it's way saltier. Mm, that makes Way sense. more fire. I feel like I would like that. That makes a lot of sense. I'm, I'm stealing your husband's um, uh, salad yeah. for, for my, my Thanksgiving dinner, though. Hank makes a fire salad and he yep. brought a fire one to Thanksgiving or Friendsgiving. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I know hearing everyone was like gassing him up, and I'm like, hell yeah, I get to eat this salad like every fucking every, day. Yeah, like anytime I want. Yeah, it's pretty great. Fuck you, bitches. But and then what what else do we have to do? Uh, what movie are you going to follow? Oh, you absolutely watch the Peanuts Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. That's one of my favorite things. I love doing that with my family it's and cute. Um, like having the pretzel and the um the jelly beans and the popcorn and all that yeah so that's classic host fun yeah i love that and i think it's fun and i like that they do like the mayflower episode too with it mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. and that's very yeah. close to us because we live near very new england yeah mm-hmm. how many times have you been to the mayflower more than i'd fucking like <laughs> yeah i i walk by her regularly you know plymouth rock the rock they've stepped on <laughs> when they came to the country it's so lame it's this whole pagoda built around this lame... F- it's just a, just a boulder. It's about the size of, like, a couch cushion. No, yeah, you, something like that. You think it would be massive. No, it's it's no. pretty small. Pretty... Yeah, just just a rock. And, you know, fuck the pilgrims. Fuck colonialism. Yeah, exactly. Forth. Goes without saying, fuck Thanksgiving. Exactly. Um, but I'd say that this was, like, just short of being a vegetarian propaganda movie mm. until they replaced the turkey with pepperoni pizza yes so yes. it's like okay so it's all about how like each turkey has a soul and we're gonna save them but it's like just replace it with a different animal product it's like okay well that kind of d- just gets rid of the point you know mm-hmm. some great vegetarian propaganda i think is okja so i can yeah. watch bong joon ho's okja that's a great not yeah about getting meat off the menu you're right you're so right so i'm always i also saw some after mickey 17 got pushed back i saw some uh bong joon ho slander on my twitter time hey of people being like why are people even excited for this movie it looks lame it, so and stupid and really boys and i'm like why do you hate fun yeah Oh, I'm what the so, fuck oh, is your problem? I'm sorry you have no whimsy. Literally, what the fuck is your problem? And everyone being like, oh, yeah, y'all pretending to like Okja just yeah. because it's from the same director as Parasite. And I'm like, no, I fucking love Okja. I'm like, just, I need to take a step back. And speaking of Mr. Bong Joon-ho, speaking of Mickey 17 getting pushed to till April, now you will all have more time to do our Swamp Book Club. We're all going to try and read yes. Mickey 17. I need to honor it still. I know. We're like, oh, we'll do it really early in time, so we'll all have like a really long time to sure. get the book, read the book, and then they did us a favor by actually pushing the movie even further because mm-hmm. they knew how slow of a read Yeah, because our dumb fucking asses. Right. Yeah. So thanks, thanks Bong Thank for pushing you. that back just for the Swamp Book Club. Thanks, Danny Bong. Uh, but we'll probably do some sort of like fun episode about that once yeah, that movie comes absolutely. out. Absolutely, Def- probably on the Patreon. Well, of course. Which you can go listen to Anora or, uh, you know, go through and see what other new yeah. stuff we've covered. As Again, well. hopefully soon. <laughs> <laughs> we will be holding space until then. Yeah, until then. Yes. Happy holidays to those who celebrate. As, uh, Thursday to everyone else. Goodbye and good night.